producers, Dion and Callie, who asks, Hey guys, I've been running into this topic a lot lately. What are your views on marijuana, RSO, being addictive? And what would you say to a parent who is weary of treating their child with it? Okay, um, it's actually a really complicated answer, but um, it's a very good question. So, first of all, there's, there's a common misconception that our community likes to promote that cannabis isn't addictive. And that's not exactly true. The truth is that any psychoactive substance is potentially habit forming. And people have different definitions of what it means to be addicted to a substance. So it's, it's certainly not an open and shut case, but just being real, any, any psychoactive substance can be habit forming. Now, I'm gonna give a much longer explanation on why that's not something we should be overly concerned about. So first and foremost, the, in terms of being habit forming, being addictive, there's a, there's a spectrum, there's a scale of how, and of how addictive a substance is. And there's a distinction between being chemically addictive and being psychologically addictive. Now, a substance like heroin or even caffeine or tobacco is extremely chemically addictive and you have very intense physical reactions to going off of a substance once your body's grown accustomed to it. And cannabis isn't typically like that. And I say typically because again, this is actually a complicated answer that I'm, I'm gonna, you'll understand in a second. But um, so the, in, on that spectrum, in terms of how addictive a substance is, scientists have studied this quite closely and they put alcohol, in, in terms of order of addictive, tobacco is more addictive than alcohol, alcohol is more addictive than caffeine, and caffeine is more addictive than cannabis. So in terms of regulating the plant based on its potential for being habit forming, I think it's appropriate to regulate it a little bit less than we regulate coffee, which is pretty much not at all. So it, yes, it can be habit forming. No, it's not seriously habit forming. Now, the, in term, the, the question specifically was around how, how would we address a parent's concerns in terms of medicating a child with this? And this has come up a lot in my work. And the, when children are, are being treated with cannabis, it's typically for either Dravet syndrome or other forms of pediatric epilepsy or very serious conditions. And the drugs that the doctors are putting these children on are extremely addictive. They're in, like some of the most addictive substances out there. And the process of getting them onto cannabis, then the next step is very slowly weaning them off these substances that they've become intensely addicted to over their lifetimes. So the concern that cannabis might be addictive seems ridiculous to me in those circumstances because what you're really talking about is weaning them off of much more dangerous substances and giving them cannabis as part of how they wean them off. Now, there's also, in terms of people who are addicted to other substances like heroin, especially opiates, there's been a lot of very good research on this. Cannabis affects the brain in a similar way to those opiates in, in that they target the same receptors. And there's actually a lot of good evidence that shows that cannabis can be an extremely powerful way of getting off of very addictive substances. So in, ter in terms of harm mitigation, Anybody who's addicted to almost any substance would be, you know, well served by trading in that addiction for cannabis, which, you know, anecdotally, most of the people I know that were able to get off of hard drugs did it using cannabis. And that's, you know, the difference between somebody being a meth head or a crackhead or, a, you know, heroin addict versus a pothead night and day. I mean, it's, it's a lot, lot better to be addicted to pot than almost any other substance. And it's not the same thing as saying it's not addictive because if you feel a strong compulsion to consume a substance, that is one definition of addictive. Now, a better definition of addiction and in terms of, you know, how the difference between say a recreational drinker versus an alcoholic. An alcoholic is experiencing negative impacts on their life because of alcohol. You can drink fairly regularly and not be considered an alcoholic, whereas somebody might be drinking less than you and be an alcoholic because they're, you know, you might say they can't handle it or at the very, it's negatively impacting their life. And that, I, that's a definition that makes sense to me. If a substance is negatively impacting your life, you have a problem with that substance. Now, this is where it gets really complicated because we, and for a long time, you know, we would see certain people being, you know, just chronic pot smokers and they can't seem to stop. They're just like a slave to the substance. And you put them in the same category as a heroin addict or, a, you know, another type of serious drug user. And 
It's I now that we understand the endocannabinoid system and we understand that there's actual real medical needs for these for can, cannabinoids and they can be treating and preventing illnesses that the patient may not even know they have. Seeing somebody strongly craving cannabis does not necessarily mean they're addicted to it. It could mean that their body knows that it needs these cannabinoids in their system. And so you know, it's it's a really complicated needle to thread because just because somebody really needs cannabis and maybe they want to stop, but their body is just telling them they need this substance, they might genuinely need that substance. They might be fighting off a cancer they don't even know they have. They might, you know, they might have some serious illness and not be aware of it, but their body knows that they're deficient in this. And that's why I really like the idea of, I'm promoting this concept called endocannabinoid deficiency syndrome which is basically the notion that we need to start thinking about cannabinoids like a food that our body needs. It's, you know, we've, it's been in our system for tens of thousands of years, if not millions of years. And we've, you know, our species has developed to need cannabinoids. And when we don't have them, we crave them. And like any dietary deficiency, if your body desperately needs a substance, it tells your brain to go seek out that food. And you're, you know, if you're intensely craving cannabis, that may very well be because cannabis is something you need. Now, that does not mean you need to be shit faced. You know, there's a big difference between needing cannabinoids and needing to be high as a kite all day, every day. And there's non psychoactive options, either, you know, high CBD meds because CBD is non psychoactive, or even just can cannabinoid acid treatments. If you're, you know, if your body is intensely craving cannabinoids, but the, the fact that you're too high to walk is interfering with your ability to work and whatnot. Consider making a move to cannabinoid acids that aren't psychoactive, but seem to have a lot of the same healing properties. And, you know, there's also, you know, some people find that it works for them to be heavily medicated before bed and they get, you know, their dose that way. But during the day, you know, it's, it's, they find it easier to have a lower dose or no dose at all. And the other thing is there's, you get better at being high and with other substances, like needing a higher and higher dose in order to have the same effect is considered a sign that you're growing dependent on that substance. Like with heroin, if you're going higher and higher doses all the time to, you know, get the same effect, that's a, you know, that's a real symptom that you have a serious problem. With cannabis, the fact that you develop a really high tolerance and, you know, somebody, you know, who smokes a joint for the first time might not be able to walk there so high versus somebody who's been smoking for a very long time can, you know, take a huge dose and still function and people might not even be able to tell that they're high. If you're, if you have a serious condition where you're going to need to consume cannabis in order to treat it, that's a positive development. That means you're able to function. You're, you know, you're, and maybe going off cannabis suddenly, you know, you're grouchy and you're not, you know, you're really craving it and you're not able to function as well as you could if you were on it. And that might be a classic sign of addiction with another substance. In this case, I think it's a positive development. It's, you know, that's really what you're going for. You're trying to be able to consume the, the plant without it interfering with your day-to-day -day activities. So that's a, that's a long answer to a complicated question, but it's an important question and I'm, I'm grateful she asked it. Thanks, Dion. Thank you. <laughs>